Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on your time zone. My name is Ville Pekka Parkkinen from Crosswrap. I'm a sales manager taking care of our customers, for example, in Benelux countries, France, Spain, and Portugal. Thank you all for attending today. And with me today is my colleague Etu. Hello, everybody. I'm Etu Laatikainen and sales manager for German speaking countries, also some Eastern European countries and Nordic countries. All right, so so we have reserved one hour uh, today to be shared with you. Of the, of the one hour, around 45 minutes, we're going to go uh, through points one and four. So talk a, bit, a little bit and introduce Crosswrap and our solutions to you. Then highly focus on the dewiring machine uh, with videos and case studies, for example and then talk a bit about bail wrapping in the in the paper industry and at the end uh, we are going to answer the questions you have uh, sent us beforehand and so starting question for for you for you all so so the question is how many wires is needed to be cut in your paper mill annually doesn't really have to be your paper mill but the paper mill you you might know all right so first of all a brief introduction about crosswrap aimed especially to those of you who do not know us already so we are a machine manufacturer from Silinjärvi, finland around 400 450 kilometers northeast from helsinki and since 1994 we have been working in various fields such as waste management waste to energy plastic recycling and of course the name of the day the paper industry and everything we do is based on the innovations of our company founder, Mr. Kallakivela. And we have, uh, like I said, over 25 years of experience working with uh, machines in over 50 countries with over 500 total installations. And with everything we do, we want to promote safe and automated working environment, thus leading to cost efficient and high performance operations for our customers. Then to show a bit where we work all around the world, just to prove my point from the previous slide, we literally work all around the world from Hawaii to New Zealand and from Argentina to Svalbard uh, in the very north. Yeah, Crosswrap is a manufacturer for automatic bail wrapping machines and bail openers, mainly for waste management and waste to energy. We almost also make automatic packaging lines and dewiring machines. We quickly go through the all the machines and then we are concentrating on the dewiring itself. The cross wrapper is the industry standard, so, so to say, wrapper used worldwide uh, in waste to management and recycling sectors. Works together with any, any balers and it's so it's really flexible to use. Then we have a direct wrapper, it's almost the same machine as the as the normal wrapper, only difference is that uh, no no wires are are needed for for the bale before the wrapping. So we start the bale wrapping straight when the bale is coming out from the from the baler, and this works only with two ram balers. Then we have the CV uh, board packaging lines. These are our biggest installations. What we make usually include lifting tables, laboring robots and and so so on included in the installation and this is cross wrap with the same same method as as the wrappers giving giving a six side cover for the bales or or boards uh, gives to total waterproof strong package then to the bale openers so though we focus today on the dewire machine as a background it's also important to mention the bale opener and in our terminology Bale opener refers to opening wrapped bales in, in destinations like waste to energy plants and cement kilns. And the development work for the bale opener started already in the year 2000. And technology wise, bale opener and the dewiring machine are very much kind of a sister machines in a way, for example, that many bale sizes can be opened. And also that uh, the creepers grab the bale wire from the side and also in a way that the front cutter cuts the wire from the front. So in short, the best practices we have learned through the bale opener assisted us to develop the dewiring machine also. And the story of the dewiring machine itself started in 2015 when a Finnish paper mill asked us 
about the dewire machine. After that pilot project, which was for so-called big, big domestic pulp bales, we made two other pilot projects, one for OCC, one for plastic recycling. And after those, we were convinced that this kind of a machine is it's needed in the market. And we officially launched the machine in late 2017. Nowadays, we have around 25 dewire machine installations in pulp, paper, and plastic recycling sectors all around the world. And as we have tens of additional deliveries for bale opener also, this technology has been already used to open millions and millions of bales all around the world. Then it's time to dig deeper to the dewire machine. As you can see in the photo, the dewire machine looks very same to the bale opener. And uh, before we tell you anything more, let's watch a video from one of our paper mill customers so you can see the machine in action. Now Edu is gonna open up to you what's happening. All right. So I will I will explain how the dewiring works in simple three steps. So first step, bail bail arrives to the dewiring on a belt conveyor. Then the side creepers attach to the bail and the wires from both sides. The second step, the side creepers are holding holding the bail. Then the front cutter cuts the wires from from the front of the bale. The cutter cuts all the way from the bottom all the way to the top of the bale, meaning that every single wire is, is cut from the bale. Etu, Etu, we, we get quite a lot of uh, questions often about the speed of the cutter. Can you open that up a little bit? Yeah, the cutter you can you can see see on the on the photo. The speed of the cutter is 60 RPM, so one round per second. And uh, this is uh, really important not to have sparks while while cutting. And yeah, the cutting is is done more like with the force, what not with the high high speed cutting. After cutting, conveyor belts uh, starts moving again, and the open open material continues to the process. Yeah, side side creepers take the wires to the side. The coiling unit is located on the on the side of the machine, as you can see on the photo. Then creepers release the wires, and coiling unit uh, makes one coil of one bale. Yeah, that's important to notice that that in in our system we make one coil per bale, which means efficient and safe way when coiling one smaller coil at a time. So there's no heating uh, caused by the coiling process, and also the coils do not get stuck because they are the smaller ones. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely right. Yeah, and so when the coil is made, uh, made coil drops to a container, recycling bin, and then the coil steel wires are ready to be recycled. And the whole process takes roughly 60 seconds. And note, note here, if pulper needs to have some wires to the pulper, it can be programmed so that the dewiring releases a couple of wires when needed. To, to the to the process. Well, that was so, shortly the operation of, of the machine. The next, the next, we want to go through five key points we wanted to highlight here. Why crosswrap dewiring is smart and why our customers have chosen, chosen us. And the five points you can see there, safety in operation, reliability, re reliable operation, cost savings, 
versatility and flexibility and smart operation. VP, you may, you may start. Yeah, so, so of course, an important value for us as well as for our customers is, is safety. And the key with the dewiring machine is that no manual work is tied to the dewiring process. So, or the dewiring process or the wild coring process. This means that uh, it's the safest and the most cost efficient way to, to work with bales as only one operator is needed to feed bales to the dewiring machine or, or alternatively to, uh, to the feeding conveyor before the machine. Also, it means that the forklift driver doesn't need to jump in and out from the forklift all the time. And there is time for operator to do other tasks as well, such as unloading trucks or taking care of the storage area. Yeah, and about the about the safety, I I heard one one quite a rough story of of a plant that was cutting the wires manual. That went well, but then they had a separate offline coiling system for the wires, and the operator was putting the wires to the coiling system, but at the same time the wire took the operator's leg to the coiler, and the leg was really badly injured in that yeah, case. In addition, yeah, in addition to, to, to the coiling is that uh, I heard from my customer that, that the coiling of wires, it saves uh, up to 80% of space needed for wire storage and transport. So, so if you mean that, you know, paper mills, they handle hundreds of thousands, if not millions of bale wires per year, that's, that's a big factor also. Then, then of course, the other important factor, uh, especially in the continuously running industries, is the, is the reliability. And, and like I said, we have been working since 2000 to develop best practices to open a bale, and that work is continuously going on with our R&D. Of course, that, that works means that the machine needs to be robust. It needs to withstand hard, hard use, but also to seek for best ways to most efficiently dewire a bale, which in our case, uh, it means, for example, that we dewire one bale at a time to make sure different bale sizes can be dewired in the most reliable way. We use belt conveyors to gently move the bales uh, in the dewiring process. And then the philosophy itself. So we grab bale wires from the side, cut them from the front to secure cutting and collection of the wires, regardless of bale size and positioning of the wires in a bale. And, uh, and also part of our philosophy is that the bale material moves forward, the bale wires stay in the back. So it's the most easy way to collect them as you don't need to pull them under or through a bale, for example. And in addition to those, those factors, since day one, we, we have wanted to have a machine that's very user friendly also for maintenance. That doesn't mean that there's no maintenance at all, but rather that maintenance is simple. And in our case, for example, weekly and daily maintenance are more like check this, clean that type of uh, things, for example, for cutters or creepers or coiling units. All right, all right. Uh, point, point three, cost savings. Yeah, the main cost saving comes when less people are needed in the material infeed, uh, of course, when compared to manual wire cutting and uh, so so operators can can do uh, other things that are adding adding value to in, in the process in the, in the mill and uh, avoiding uh, employee in, in injuries is 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 also part of that Oper operational costs you can see see their uh, box of example figures these are calculated uh, with the infeed of 40 bales Per, per hour. And as uh, BP said, minimal maintenance needs uh, is the is, is same as uh, minimal operational cost needs. Uh, then about the investment, uh, we can say it's the, the machine is not a million investment. And for detailed uh, information, you may contact our sales managers for pricing in information. Then fourth point, versatility and flexibility. There you can see the first picture is uh, presents that there's uh, different sizes of bales one after another. So this means that machine recognizes different size sizes of bales with sensors. The creepers uh, work work with pressure and also the cutter work work with pressure so they can they they will always attach to the bale accordingly and we have two different models uh, dv1400 that is mainly for european market bales and dv1800 mainly for usa 
and UK market bales because they traditionally use a little bit bigger bigger balers. And as as our company has worked 26 years in with with baling with the bale wrappers, we sort of uh, quite well know the different bale, bale sizes that there is in the market. So part of versatility and flexibility for us is also the positioning of the machine and the layout. And, and we, we know that different customers, different projects have different needs for the dewiring machine also. There are new lines, there are existing lines, there are layout restrictions. And, uh, and our philosophy has, has been more that uh, if it's doable, we will, we will do it. And, and uh, next, we, we, we will take a look at a couple of sample layouts just for you to get the idea. So, for example, this is a straight line with a long buffer conveyor after the dewiring process. The, de the material goes to an underflow conveyor, taking material to the next step. Then, in this case, the feeding conveyor has a 90 degree turning of bales with a turning table before the bales go to rewiring. Uh, Eto, do you remember why this needed to be a 90 degree angle? Yeah, there was a space limitation because of the whole area and still the customer wanted to have a long buffer conveyor. So, so we made it with the 90 degree turning table. Last example, here the machine is lifted. So the machine has a raised frame and the dewiring machine uh, releases material to a rising conveyor taking materials further. So then to the uh, smart operation. And, and we like to think that uh, everything we do and, and our machines, they are smart. And for us, that means latest automation program technology that our in-house automation team has made for the machines. So in practice, this means state-of-art PLCs with easy to use and informatical operational panels where you can get a lot of information depending on your needs about the dewiring process. And you can share that information also, for example, with plant monitoring systems, uh, depending on your needs. And one good thing is also that all cross wrap machines have internet connection as a standard, which means that there's a possibility for our engineers to make remote adjustments, remote programming, remote uh, updates for the machines at every time. And then, Etu, can you tell us a bit about the uh, different uh, optional features? Uh, here is the weighing unit. As you can see from the photo, the bale weighing option that you you may have, it's it's in the dewiring machine conveyor itself. So we don't need any extra space for for that. And with the weighing system, you can uh, uh, get data of the infeed process. For example, tons per day, tons per month. And, and so so on, how, however wanted. Then uh, shortly about conveyors, always uh, our, our main thing is always the dewiring de machine, but depending on the, on, on, on the project needs and so on, we, we manufacture feeding conveyors and discharge uh, conveyor. And the feeding conveyor from us, it always stops automatically when, when loading a bale. So that is also safety safety thing and there you can see our standard conveyor lengths what we have but all all our can can be customized and heights of the bailers uh, conveyors and so on some some examples of other additional features what what we have for example a camera system can be linked to the monitoring system of of the band of the plant so you may to remote monitoring. Then there's all, also the metal detector or on the discharge conveyor. If, if if there's a case that zero metal and zero wires are wanted to the pulper, we have an op optional system to have a metal detector on the discharge conveyor. And we also all, all the time develop uh, new additional features according to customer needs. Okay, now to the case studies. Yes, we have prepared you two case studies uh, where we can show you some concrete cases with the dewiring machine. Uh, you may recognize this location already from the first video. This is from Sonoko Alkore plant in Kotka, Finland, where our machine has been running since 2016, dewiring OCC bales to a conveyor that takes material to the pulper. And up to date, close to a half a million bales have been dewired in this plant. 
So where we started with this project was that uh, the dewire machine was part of a bigger project where the customers want was to have an automatic uh, dewiring machine because to these changes brought by the project, there was a need to have a significantly less amount of wires in the pulper. It's good to note that there was still need for some wires into the pulper from time to time for pulper cleaning purposes. And uh, when in Finland, it's always essential to take into account the climate also. So the weather can vary from minus 30 to plus 30, which creates demands for the machinery itself, but also uh, demands that OCC bales of very different conditions, for example, frozen, need to be opened as well. So like you saw in the video, as well as in that photo, what we did with the customer was, was that uh, we integrated the rewiring machine to the customer's existing long feeding conveyor to create a large buffer of bales before the dewiring closes. And nowadays, one operator feeds bales to the conveyor, keeps an eye on the stock preparation process, and also takes care of unloading trucks and the bale storage yard. So stable material and operational flow was achieved uh, with the dewiring machine in this project. And with the, and, and with the tailor-made program also made to the dewiring machine, it's now possible to let some bale wires to the pulper when, is it, uh, when there is a need, so need to do so for the pulper cleaning purposes. Yeah, and actually I remember of this case also uh, that the customer is re receiving small amount of cardboard that is uh, not, uh, not, not in bales. So Pippi, can you tell about that? Yeah, there's, there's also a side feeding possibility for a loose material. Uh, in the conveyor that takes material to the pulper. So yes, yes, you are correct. And in addition to this project, uh, the now customer nowadays also gets paid for further recycling of the bale wires. This may seem like a small thing, but you know, over the years with hundreds of thousands, millions of bale wires, uh, it makes a difference whether you get some money out of it or whether you pay for recycling. And then the next example is from the Netherlands. Edu, please. Other case we we put here to the presentation is uh, traditional Dutch paper mill papier fabric Dottingham, where we installed the dewiring machine last year uh, to open OCC and waste uh, paper bales. And the infeed capacity in this is average uh, 20 bales per hour. And interesting in this case is that the dewiring is located just before the pulper. You, you will see it from the video. Yeah, and again, we will show you the video and after the video, Edu will, will open that up for you. A uh, starting pro point in, in this uh, project was so, as the uh, paper fabric uses large number of uh, different uh, grades of waste paper, there was large number of different uh, quality of bales and different sizes of bales, as you can see uh, in, the, in the photo. 
and they need a solution that handles all the different bales with the, with the same machine. Uh, as often in older paper mills, also papier fabrique, there, there was the extreme limited space. It, it took a lot, lot of design and exact uh, measurements to fit the machine to the uh, site. And then the results of, of, of this case example, uh, as you could see, see from, from the photo, it, it took really effort to have, have the machine, machine there. The machine was located just before the pulper and before that there was an existing uh, con conveyor you can see also in, in the photo, the green conveyor. Yeah, indeed. I visited this customer many times and, and I can say it's a very, very tight space there. Really a, a centimeter game, you know, looking up, down or, or to the side. But uh, it, it took a lot of design, but uh, it, it fits now there very well. Yeah, yeah. And of the re results, uh, so nowadays uh, there is no, no labor tied uh, to the stock preparation and uh, Im improved safe safety for the for the company. So so operators have time to do do other other things. All else is automatic. The dewiring machine feeds material when it gets the permission from from the pulper. So that is linked to the pulper. So then to the. Uh wire cutting solutions we have for the paper industry as well. Uh, of course, we recognize that it, it depends on the type of the process, the type of the pulper, when bale wires need to be dewired, and in turn, when the process needs bale wires to go to the pulper. And, and that is why we have done some projects also and, and some design works also for wire cutters that are needed in, in stock preparation. And this photo is from a project we did in the UK in a paper mill that needed a uh, wire cutter for certain type of bales, for bales where bale wires are horizontally aligned when they are in the conveyor. And in simple terms, the conveyor continuously rolls on and the bale wires are cut, the bale passes the bale wire cutter. Then nowadays we also have another design which we are working on with, uh, with one project for to cut vertically aligned wires from the top. So here the creeper goes down to the bale gently grabs the wires and cuts them. And uh, with the previous cutter, as well as with this one, uh, well-known and proven cross-wrap solutions are used from our other machines in a very simple way to build flexible and cost-efficient solutions for wire cutting. Yeah, and actually these uh, two wire cutters that you saw, this can be also used uh, as a pair. So so you can you can use, use them both if there's uh, two-sided wires coming. Yeah, it's depending on the customer needs. They can be used individually or, or as a pair. And now we have gone through the dewire machine, uh, the wire cutters. So next, a couple of words about the bale wrapping in the paper industry. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you. Uh, so a little bit about the bale, bale wrapping in, in paper industry. Yeah, you can see see the wrappers we introduced so, shortly in, in, in the beginning. Like said, our wrappers can be used in for various uh, materials to be wrapped. Uh, in general, baling and wrapping is often used when, when, when there is need for storing and transport of materials. And of course, bale, bale material is more compact and economical in handling, transporting and storage. Rat bales can be, can be handled, stored and strung, uh, transported without uh, littering orders or material loss. And uh, our wrappers, we, we wrap uh, rectangular bales and that is an ad, ad, advantage to have the rectangular bales. They are most efficient and economical to, to store and transport. You can see photos of uh, ship transport and photo of truck transport. And next we focus on different solutions that wrapping in you is used in paper industry a little bit about background so yeah land landfilling especially in 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 the future will will not be the way to hand, handle the rejects rejects can be used as alternative fuels replacing 
fossil fuels. Uh, was it so, Eto, that we did this kind of project already already back in the 1990s in, in Finland? Yeah, actually, it's actually true. We have done quite a few pulper uh, reject uh, wrapping for paper mills, at, at least in Finland. Poland, Turkey, and and so on. We see this this as an in, increasing need because of the restrictions in uh, land landfilling. Of course, needs are needs are variable. Some want to have an intermediate uh, storage for their own alternative fuel use, where some want to transport the wrap bales to another location for for waste to energy. And big benefit of of baling the reject is also that you you get the clean storage area. So, so no dried rejects are flying around in the, in the wind. Then the second example is, is from a big international company whose process side products are immediately baled and wrapped. This is also because there's a will not to landfill reject materials, but also that customer doesn't want to have any littering inside. In this case, as with many reject material cases, the capacities are not necessarily very big, but in, in safety and economical wise and environmental wise, bailing and wrapping is a very good solution to store and transport these rejects and site materials to be utilized lo locally, for example, in their own waste to energy or to be sent elsewhere to be used. Here's another example where the customer has, has very low volumes, uh, around five, six bales per hour for tissue reject, rejects. And, and here also there was a big wheel to keep the plant clean because these automated vehicles are moving on the floor. And of course, if their floor would be full of litter, it would be hard for them to move. And, and here the same thing, good payback for the customer because of fully automatic solution and, and bailing and wrapping doesn't tie any operational personal for them. Then to something quite different, we have also done some projects to cross wrap actual pulp or, or, or fibers for transport purposes. I'm sorry, we cannot tell very much about this project, but uh, as you know, the material is, is how to say quite uh, fluffy and does not hold uh, well when you bail it. So, so we did this project with the direct wrapper where the wrapping process starts immediately after the bailing. And as you can see from the photos, it's a good, good way to uh, protect the bale and keep it together for handling, storing and, and transport to the end locations of these bales. So Eto, you have the answer for the question you had in the beginning. Uh, yeah, here, here is the question that we had in the, in the beginning. Uh, so uh, how many bales is needed to be cut? in your paper paper mill annually so we uh, have here a, a example calculation so if the plant is running 24 7 uh, 350 days in in a year and average uh, bales in feed is 24 bales per hour uh, you get a nice number of million wires needed to be cut and handled and this is uh, calculated with average of uh, five wires in one bale. Yeah, capacity-wise, uh, 24 bales per hour, that's not a very big number for, uh, for a paper mill. Yeah, yeah. And you can look at the one million wires also as if it would, if the dewiring is done, man, done manually, then there is potential one, one million uh, safety hazards in, in the operation. And uh, if, if also if the work, work is done with a really old, old machine that is not working that well anymore, uh, you can say that there's basically one million possible er errors that can happen in, in a year. We received a couple of questions beforehand and uh, uh, those are quite common questions for us so we, I, we thought it's good to uh, keep them part of the presentation so Eto, maybe the most asked question from us uh, what is the capacity of the dewaring system we told it quickly uh, in the presentation it's uh, around uh, 60 bales per hour the dewiring process takes uh, roughly one one minute and of course with the 
if if wires are not not removed, it can be uh, faster and different case with the wire wire cut cutters. Uh, then the second question we got: uh, What is the effectiveness? We understood this in a way that it means the wire removal uh, efficiency, and 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 uh, we promise it to be over ninety percent. But in practice, in tests we have made with together with our customers, we have reached uh, effectiveness of around 95 to 97 percentage. Uh, it depends uh, uh, mostly on the quality and condition of the base at hand. So that's that's uh, why there's a bit of a difference on what we promise and what we have in practice. Then uh, to about the maintenance. Uh, yeah, about the maintenance. Uh, maintenance is mainly daily and weekly uh, maintenance that is needed as 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 was told told in the presentation uh checking the creepers uh, uh the cutter plate and the wire wire coiling unit and and the cutter plate actually you can you can uh, uh resharpen the the cutter plate uh and uh it's really quick quick to uh change only a couple of parts and you get it off and you can put there uh, another uh, plate and then you can sharpen the old one and use it again. Fourth question we had, we think that a wire is necessary to get a tail inside the pulper. What's your opinion? Hard, hard to have, a, have an opinion on that because from our perspective, some processes, some pulpers, they need to have wires in and some some of them don't. So for, for the customers that need to have wires out, we have the dewiring machine. And for the customers that uh, that need to have need to need the wires to go in, we have the wire cutters. So so uh, uh, from our perspective, uh, uh, there's <laughs> It's it's a hard question for us uh, from from our perspective because we are before before the pulper. Is there a system used on bale wires that are used in a two pulper system that are side by side? We understand this question so that there is a situation that that there's two pulpers side by side and a possibility to feed uh, the opened material. To the both pulpers. Yes, it can can be done with with one dewiring machine. We can have a conveyor that splits the material to right or left. Of course, there's a possibility to have two separate lines and have uh, two uh, dewiring machines in in this case. Etu, uh, how does the dewiring machine work with other types of bales, such as for plastics? Yeah, the dewiring machine works works well with plastics, and we have many many uh, installations in in plastics uh, as as well. So basically, any any uh, bale bales that are baled and has uh, wires around it, uh, this this works well for for those uh, different kind of materials. Thank you, everybody for attending. Uh, I, I wish you found this webinar useful and uh, I wish you all a great, great day. Yeah, me from me too. Thank you for attending over and out from us.